Hi, I'm Larry Croft. I live in Salt Lake and I'm here to tie some flies for you guys today. I really appreciate the opportunity. The first one uh, we're going to tie up is a very simple fly, Griffith Snat. But the purpose of this is to learn how to use a new way to use dubbing wax. Each of you have got one of these little things that I made. And we'll go over how to make them at some point. So you can either do this with a 16, 18, or 20. This is a 16 so you guys can see it. I'm just going to put a complete amount of thread on the, on the hook. Then I'm going to come back here and tie in the hackle. And this is what I normally do is grab a bunch of different uh, colors of hackle and put them in a plastic bag so I've got the right size when I need it. This will be a grizzly. If I can get it out. So I've been tying for a long time and I'll tell you these new, they're not new, but these whiting hackles that are long are just fabulous. So the way I usually prep this is I get to the end and I put a little clip on the barbs, but the barbs are still there. Anybody see that? Just hold it right in front of the hook. Anything you're gonna Anybody see that? So I face it so the concave side is back towards the end of the hook. And then I'll tie this in. Just like that. Throw it back there. Now we're going to use some peacock pearl if I can find it. John, I think you've seen this before. So I always clip the tip off because it's usually pretty weak. And I tie in a piece of pearl like that, right back to where the hackle's tied in. All right, now we take our little mousetrap glue device and slide it in sideways. I got a whole bag of them somewhere. And the trick here on this particular thing is to make sure you grab it and push down on it so that the glue, you're in the middle of the glue and you slide it down on the thread like that. And carefully pull it out. As, as you um, tie with this, one problem with it is that um, you leave it on your bench and it collects all the little pieces. <laughs> but that's okay. So then all we do here is touch this peacock curl. Oh, it broke on me. That's all right. We'll get it going. So what I'm doing here is wrapping the hurl with the thread so you get a really strong fly. And one this big, you could probably use two pieces of hurl instead of one. So that's really supported in there and it'll hold up under a lot of fish. Usually. It never happens to me. It just happened to me. So we're going to have to double hackle this to make it work. The trick there is to release that knot on the back and spin that and make sure you wrap it on all the <laughs> Well, this is going to be a high floating fly anyway. 
So basically what we've done is we've saved the fly, even though the hackle broke. during the tying session. Yeah, it is. This next two flies is called the ram caddis. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about this uh, trip I took last summer. It was the week of uh, just before the eclipse, and I decided to go up to Idaho and Montana and go fishing for a whole week by myself. So, first thing I did was drive up to River Bend Campground on the Henry's Fork and um, set up camp on Sunday night. And the first day, I, which we'll talk about a little later, I, I did a guided trip with three rivers on the Henry's Fork, and that's where we I first learned about the sparkle minnow, smoke sparkle minnow. But then a couple days later, I did a trip with Bob Sorensen. I don't know if you guys all, or Swenson, I don't know if you guys know him. We had him come type for us last year. Right? You did? Yeah. Swenson? Yeah, last year, year before. He's a really good guy. Anyway, um, last year he was guiding for drift, which is fly shop right there next to the Henry's Lake entrance. Down the street from John's house. Down the, down the street from John's house. He also was the, worked on the golf course. I'm not a golfer, but anyway. I know, that's what he told me. So anyway, um, long story short, he took me fishing one day and we started out up on um, the um, Gallatin in the park and I don't know about you guys but I've never I've really been very successful in Yellowstone National Park so we get up real early and go through the gate before the crowds get there and we go up on the Gallatin, and we're in the park, and I probably shouldn't say where this is. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've tied on some spandex uh, green flexi floss, and uh, now I'm gonna put a wire rib on this. So the research I did on this ram fly back in the 70s and 80s, uh, it was a very popular fly in Yellowstone. And they fished it quite a bit. And then it kind of fell out of favor. And this is the version that um, was first introduced. And again, it's a real simple fly. Um, if you guys don't have any of these, you should get some for your wire. It saves a lot of hassle and saves your scissors. And um, I think uh, Michael's has them, um, Joanne's has them, you can probably find them anywhere. But they cut wire really well, they're pretty handy. So I'm tying in a small 
brown, copper brown piece of wire to rib this fly with. And we're just gonna wrap No, no, we were in the park. Well, I could tell you where it is, but um, I've fished there before, and um, if you promise not to say anything, it's the third turnout coming in from Yellowstone. And I was, it's pretty brushy, so we had to have bear spray and all of that. And we were up there real early and it was still, I mean, really cold. But we fished this run and it was probably, about a football field maybe, long, it was a long run. And we fished it three times, three times. And um, I probably caught 30 fish, it was crazy. And we were nymphing. And the funny part about it was I went um, to Blue Ribbon the day before and I bought some flies from them that they said would work. <laughs> and we never even came close to using any of them. Totally different. But the number one fly was, was not this one, but the next one I'll tie. But this is the old version of it. I'm sure it works very well. So this is a hand hackle. And I really like these because they're really strong. And you could use partridge. Uh, CDC, a lot of other things for this, but these hen hackles I really like. I don't know if you guys have used them before, but they're pretty strong and they make a nice soft hackle. And I've got a bunch of them. This only takes a couple of wraps. Maybe three. Show you something else. You see that? It's one of those stitch removal tools. Seam ripper. Seam ripper, yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the other end of a whip finisher. So I'm going to push these back a little bit. Make sure they're like that. Then we're going to put a little bit of black dubbing on that. Well, I'll do, do my other trick. This is supposed to have a black head on it. So then you get out your Sharpie and you paint it. I do. I know. Is he still around? Um, I, I didn't see him last year, but he's... I didn't either. He used to work for um, one of the, oh, Eric. Eric's fly shop, yeah. yeah he quit working for Eric, but his wife was working for the bakery there, and they, she lost her job. They closed it. So 
So Bob, I'm, I'm not sure where he came up with this. What I do know that, are we rolling? Yep, you're rolling. Um, he actually got all this Zelon, that's what this stuff is. And I can give you some to tie this. He had uh, blue ribbons dye it for him. So I know Bob would go home after guiding up there last year and uh, tie dozens and dozens of these. Because they're so easy to tie. This is dimped, yeah. but this one will floats above the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the way he set it up is he had the split shot in between two, two bugs, so it was pulling down both bugs. And the way I fished it on the Weber and the Provo is, um, well, it's sort of like check nymphing. but I use a heavily weighted fly and that's when we get to the golden stone. That's what that's gonna be. And then that drops it right down. So there's the, uh, the body. And it seems kind of weird that this works, but it's just amazing. Originally, the um, the other bug, they fished it for the Mother's Day caddis hatch. And uh, but I think because caddis are in the water all the time, you can probably fish it all summer long. So this is again Zelon. I, I think you could use CDC, Zelon, uh, a number of things for this wing. Now I'm borrowing stuff from Dave. So you don't need very much dubbing. And I, I usually use the super fine, like that's too much. And I don't know if you guys know this trick or not, but uh, if you hang on to your dubbing, I learned this from John Romer last year. But if you hang on to the dubbing after you get it on, and it doesn't have to be dubbed very well, it'll tighten up on the thread as you wind it all by itself. And there you go. Ram caddis. So this is basically a uh, searching pattern that Mercer developed. And I buy a lot of my hooks from the fly shop in Redding, California. They have some uh, really good pricing on the basic TMCO hooks. So anyway, first of all, the basis on this is a thread body. And um, you put a little flash on it. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen this sulky thread. Again, it's a Joanne deal 
and there was a uh, sewing shop in Salt Lake that had it for a while, but they went out of business. You can also buy it online. And um, actually, Lance turned me on to this one because he used uses it on his flies. But this stuff is about four times stronger than any flash you'll ever see. So for ribbing, um, anywhere where you want to put pearl flash, it comes in all kinds of colors, blue, black, green, yellow, pink, whatever. So first of all, you guys know about spinning thread, <clears throat> flatten it out counterclockwise. If you want a nice smooth body here on this fly, then come up about two thirds. And this is uh, the sulky thread going on. This stuff is really, really tough. And I'll show you here in just a sec. Tie this in. I cannot, well, I barely broke that. Most flashes is not like that. So then I get out my super duper UV fluorescing loon stuff and I coat the, this body with this to make it more durable. And then use the magic light which there are a bunch of different ones. See, John, I'm uh, pursuing the use of your vice. <laughs> I like that. It's pretty handy. So that's nice and hard now. So then we tie in the legs, and these again are uh, Zelon. And I'm going to trim this. Usually I wet it. This is the gray zealon. Pardon me? The gray zealon on this? The which? Gray. Gray? Light gray. So we're going to tie this one on this side. And then I'm going to trim it long for now. And I'm going to tie it on the other side. like that. <clears throat> Turn that there. So we got these floppy legs out here. You can thank Mike Mercer for this whole deal. Years ago when him and I were working on this, it came from Charlie Cravens. Um, and he uh, used to use a plastic bag and then use those canned air deals. And again, we're using the mousetrap glue to dub this. And all you really need is a little bit of dubbing. So I don't know if you guys have used ice dub a lot, but it's not the easiest stuff to dub with. But with that mousetrap glue on there, there you go. Anybody see that? So that stuff's really on there. Now, so the next thing is the wing. Actually, that works pretty good. And 
then um, you can either use, this happens to be yearling elk premium bleached, but you don't want to put too much hair on this fly. Otherwise, it gets too bulky. You guys know about tapping at an angle with your hair like this? It actually sets it up a lot better in the stacker. So I haven't got a lot of hair here. Anybody see that? But it's enough to do the wing. And the wing should go back about as far as the end of the hook. What was that? So normally what I do is I do two loose wraps and then I pull on it and do some more, maybe two or three more, and I come forward with it, and then post it up like that. Now the next thing, and it's probably the hardest part, is to tie in the hackle. which I use pre on most of these patterns. You can use Grizzly, you can make it whatever you'd like. This is a Cree hackle. we don't trim the hair at this point is because we we want to um, tie the hackle in uh, uh, facing downward so we can wrap it yeah there we go thanks John new toys like that, and then we want to wrap it underneath the entire wing two or three or four times, then I can catch that hackle there, go around a couple times, Bring it over there. Using that again to cut the hackle out. Then what I'll do right now is put a dab of head cement right between the hackle and the wing and let that <clears throat> dry to get that more securely done. And then, because you got all that hair, I prefer to use a uh, half hitch tool because I, um, I shoot raw photos and then I shrink them like what I sent to you but you can see every detail and when you blow them up it's almost scary so what you think is a good tie ends up being not so hot so now we want to trim 
bulk off the wing. Just have a standard caddis head there. Like that. And then because I can't access it with the in the vise, to trim the legs to the back of a hook. And there is your missing link. I will. So you can see it, floats really well, and the rear end actually hangs down the water like an emerger kind of thing. So there is this guy named CJ Fishnuts. Anybody ever heard of him? Yeah, you do. Huh? You do. Yep. I've been called that. <laughs> Monkey nuts. <laughs> you should go and sometime when you're on YouTube and look at his stuff. He's absolutely amazing. He's got probably a hundred videos. He fishes streams all over Utah. And um, he ties a few flies, not a lot, but a few. And this is one he's got on his site. Um, and what I've done to his version of it is uh, made it better, I think. No, no, I didn't do that, but we could, you could probably do that too. So, first thing I do is put on a tungsten bead, and that's all I use, and that's all that's in that, those cases right there. So, um, please don't take it. There's about $10,000 worth of beads in there. <laughs> Just kidding. So this is a size eight scud hook. I bought, ended up buying some hooks from uh, Gary Barnes. And these are Moonlight, which are the guy. The guy actually lives in Pocatello. Moonlit. Moonlit. See, did you used to teach English, Dave? No, I just uh, get a few Moonlit hooks myself. Just... Well, that's good to know, I guess. Eight, eight, uh, 12. All right, so the first thing we do is we tie in some legs, and you can either use uh, brown or amber flexi floss. And for this one, I think I'll use uh, the amber. So I'm putting in first the quote unquote antennas for this and I, I pulled the bead back I'm going to secure those in there and then we'll finish it And you have to pretty much use uh, 7 aught, 70 denier thread to do that so you don't put too much bulk on there. And then you just trim the antenna, and there's your antennas. Okay? And then, <clears throat> this is one of the things I've changed because I want this baby on the on the uh, bottom B O T T O M guess I didn't bring that over normally I use uh, O two O this is fifteen but it'll still work 
and I basically want to build up a lead-free body about that far. So then I push this into the head like that, so most of the body is there. This is an 040 bead, but when you go a little bit smaller on this bug, you can take it down. A little further. Okay, um, this next step, I've tied in the tail. Again, plexifloss, brown or amber. Um, what I've got here is small, round vinyl tubing. You can also use um, D-rib, but the problem with D-rib is you can't do what I've done here. And what I've done is I've inserted a small UTC white wire inside of this. And I know you're not going to be able to do it today, but I've got a few pieces of this that I've made. And some of you can try it. Um, and what that does is it puts a white layer on each segment on the top. And then I will cover that with a brown magic marker to give it a real stonefly, golden stone. If you ever looked at the golden stone, it's a, really a multicolored nymph. So I've kind of, this is one of the adders I've done for this fly that uh, CJ Fishnuts didn't do on his. He made a, a what I would call a, a guide fly version well so I tie in the, just the end of it there trying not to build up too much there try to keep the body as smooth as possible so to put this wire in there you have to put olive oil on your fingers and then put the olive oil on the wire and then start pushing it through and keep doing that and you can go probably about that far without too much friction that'll make several bodies and you can do this with any color with an any color wire to do whatever you need to do I thought that was pretty cool well I don't know everybody in that club so can everybody see this now Oh, forget, hold it, forgot one thing. To make this really durable, because this thing gets pounded, I'm going to put just a little bit of super glue on it so it's kind of glued in. You just need to coat the top because it'll push it around. This is small. Um, the round stuff, I don't know that it comes as midge. It might. But I know D-rib comes as midge. But. Yeah. In fact, it is um, standard tubing dark golden stone in the round version. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? You like that? Nice. Sexy. <clears throat> so, I'm not gonna lie about this. I have not actually tested this yet. 
but I will. I will. So the next step is some UV golden stone dubbing. And I have some here if you guys need it. And I mostly use UV dubbing for almost everything, even if it's not realistic. It works. So once again, we'll use our mouse trap. And I promise you this fly will sink and you don't really need split shot with it. And I would definitely fish this with that ram in a lot of the streams. No questions asked. This would be the lead fly. This you would tie above. Okay. You would tie this on first. You guys know all about what I'm talking about when I say uh, that it, it, you do a triple surgeons with the tag end, and then you tie the first nymph there on the tag end that you don't cut off. And then you come down and tie the second fly on down below it. And that way you're 12 to 18 inches apart. And then the first fly comes down, and this is the same thing they do in the Euro. The first fly comes down and pulls the second fly down. So all the weight's on the first fly, which I think a lot of people don't do Euro nymphing. So the second fly is free to fly out. Yeah. Now you talk to Lance or somebody else, they may tell you something different. But that's the way Mickey Anderson does it. And he's gone to Euro nymphing quite a bit too, so all right. TV show nice. He did. Is this is this does this go part way or no? Is it either all full on or full off? No, yeah, it's, but you can tighten that screw Okay, I got it, top. got it. There we go. All right. I'm learning here, guys. I'm uh, I, I have senior moments occasionally, but I am learning. So I'm going to tie in two more legs on each side. And the first ones go... Um, right at the end of the abdomen right where the thorax starts. So, to be honest with you guys, I'm not lying, I have never fished this bug, but I've fished a lot of golden stones that have been very effective, and Mickey, who I totally admire, um, fishes tongue stones. But when I showed him this fly, he said, man, that will fish. So. Yeah. <laughs> that too. So CJ's version of this is just there's no wire in the tubing. He uses D-rib. Then he puts on a couple wing cases, and that's it. No legs. He just uses the dubbing for the legs. But I, I think the flexi-floss stuff really helps. So one of the tricks here, this is um, thin skin, but it's spec mini tan, and you're more than welcome to get a piece of this to do the wing cases. But one of the tricks here is um, if you leave it long enough that you can pull it up and cut it, 
I'll show you what happens. See, I, I didn't leave that quite long enough. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Now I can raise that up. And if I stick my scissors in here, pinch it, and cut it, there's your first wing case, like a wing case should be. You guys can't see it from there, but if I do this, see how that wing case is? Okay, then you can just come back here, cut that off. So then we're going to tie in the second wing case. Again, make it long, longer. How wide is your thin skin about? It's yeah. about two thirds of the hook gap okay. is the normal measurement. Plus or minus a little bit. I have such big fingers, this is hard to do. But So there's the second one. I'm going to trim this off with my Rubus scissors. They are sharp. You know, I get a lot closer with those curved things. Then I'm going to put just a little bit more dubbing on this. the thread. <laughs> Put a little head cement on this thing to fortify it. Somewhere along the line, I lost a leg. Sorry about that. He's an amputee. So there's a leg missing. I don't know what happened, but I must have tri trimmed it off at some point. Okay, this next fly is a smoke sparkle minnow. Um, this pattern is on the internet times about 20 different versions of it. Um, so normally when I'm fishing this, and this is a new fly for me from last year, I fish it in rivers as a streamer and I fish it. All right, so I'm, we're using 140 white thread. Um, and the first thing that goes into this fly is the tail, which is a two-tone tail. And for the smoke, it's uh, black. And this is slate brown. And most of the uh, patterns on the internet have two-tone but there's so many versions of this and colors that you can do it in about anything. <clears throat> I 
But again, you waste a lot of marabou when you do something like this. But that's all right. It's more money for the shops, right? John, I'm surprised you haven't tied this. Hmm? I'm surprised you haven't tied this pattern. Really popular. So the, the big lie for this fly was that trip I was talking about. I, um, with three rivers on the Henry's Fork down below Ashton Dam. And that was the Monday and it was cloudy, so we fished streamers all day. And in early in the afternoon, we went up to, um, we did Chester backwater in the morning, and then we went up to the Ashton Dam in the afternoon, fished that. And um, I was, um, um, throwing streamers like crazy. And all of a sudden I hooked this big fish, didn't know how big. And, um, oh, there's one more thing I gotta do. Um, he went way down below us and then he went back up towards us. And I was reeling in as fast as I could and all of a sudden this, huge fish jumps straight out of the water three feet in the air does a 180 goes down gone and I look over at my guide like this and he says that is the biggest fish I've seen in three years on this river and it was on this this pattern he gave it to me <laughs> so this is uh, you can use, you can either double loop or you can use um, this belly material. But basically what happens is this hangs down below this bug and then we'll bring it up at the end. So is this pearl, um, polar chenille? It's polar chenille or it can be this stuff, midnight blue or um, pearl, middle, medium, or you can double loop out of it. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter because all you're trying to do is put a white, a whiter belly on the bottom of this fly. So when I was first putting, doing this, I, I made some dubbing loops and, and they're not really that good, but I want to show you real quick. See the difference between this and the one I made, there's quite a difference. They both work, but this is this really isn't as even as it should be. So I'm going to take one of these. And the only thing with wire brushes is you got to be careful with the wire. So I'm going to tie that in there like that and bury the wire. And then we're just gonna polymer this and keep moving the fibers back. Trying to keep the, the belly material. This is the only problematic part. Oh, yeah, if I can. That's all right. It's a wire or a wire brush, and this one is. Um, I don't know where the package is. No, these these were purchased. I purchased these from Fish Tech. Um, 
it's like kind of like what Sam says. Um, you can spend a lot of time and effort to make one, or you can buy six 12-inch pieces for nine bucks. So what I'm going to do right now is tie in the the belly. And to do that, I'm going to leave the wire brush on there. Now, hopefully, I can turn this over. Now, we're going to take a, a. There, I did it. See that, John? I'm getting better at it. Take a brush. I don't know if you've ever watched Cheech tie flies, but this, that, this is all he ever does brush that living daylights out of the fly. And all I'm doing basically is creating a place for the belly to go. I just bring that up underneath, take the fibers out, and then tie that in, in the bottom. And then cut it off. No, I don't want to cut that. I just want to cut the belly. Then we're going to turn it back up and put a couple more winds of the wire brush on here. So we fill up the area right behind the cone. And again, I'll use my wire nippers to cut that. Throw this in there. Good finish. Add cement in there. That'll also help keep the cone from moving around. Come on. Do that in a minute. Then we'll comb it out again. There is your sparkle mental.